Senator. Mr. Secretary, you have presided over the worst foreign policy disaster of modern times. When Joe Biden became president, he inherited peace and prosperity in the world. We now have two simultaneous wars waging, the worst war in Europe since World War II and the worst war in the Middle East in 50 years. Both, I believe, were caused by this administration's consistent weakness. And indeed, your foreign policy is precisely backwards from what a rational American foreign policy should be. To our friends and allies, this administration has consistently undermined, weakened, and attacked them. And to our enemies, this administration has shown constant appeasement and indeed has flowed billions of dollars to the enemies of America who want to kill us. Senator Barrasso asked you about Ibram Raisi. Your State Department put out a statement sending condolences for his death. Mr. Secretary, is the world better today now that Raisi is dead? Given the horrible acts that he engaged in, both as a judge uh, and as president, uh, to the extent he can no longer engage in them, yes, the Iranian people are probably better off. You, you didn't say that in your statement, did you? Uh, I, I believe that, uh, that we did. And certainly our T spokesperson- Today, the United Nations is flying their fl flag at half-staff to mourn the death. Would you agree that it is utterly disgraceful for the United Nations to be mourning the death of the butcher of Tehran? Uh, we're certainly not mourning his death, as I said. We Would you agree it's disgraceful of, for the UN to be? Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll look at what they've done. We certainly would not do that. The, what they've done is flown the flag at half-staff. Mm -hmm. Is well, that disgraceful? We, we wouldn't do that, and we would certainly find that. And, and I would note that's the absence of American leadership. All right, let's shift. The Washington Post on May 11th wrote an article. I'm going to read the opening paragraph. The Biden administration working urgently to stave off a full-scale Israeli invasion of Rafah is offering Israel valuable assistance in an effort to persuade it to hold back, including sensitive intelligence to help the Israeli military pinpoint the location of Hamas leaders and find the group's hidden tunnels, according to four people familiar with the U.S. offers. Is that paragraph accurate? Uh, exactly the opposite. First of all, no one has done more to defend Israel than Joe Biden. Is that paragraph uh, let, no, accurate? No, let me finish, if I may, please. He was there right after. I, I'm not interested 7th. in a campaign speech. I'm, I, I have limited time. Is the paragraph in the Washington Post accurate? Uh, as you read it, no. Uh, to the contrary, we're providing everything we possibly can to Israel to help them find. So the four sources them. that briefed the Post, and by the way, briefed I, multiple other media outlets, they were lying? Uh, absolutely. So, it's, all right, so that, does the administration, did the administration offer to provide the locations of senior Hamas leaders to Israel if they didn't invade Rafah? Uh, that's, t again, Totally, uh, totally misleading and wrong. Here's what we've said, and here's what, and here's what we're doing. We have said that there is a better way to deal with the challenge that- I, I'm not interested in the speech. If you don't want to Did hear my answer- Did you offer the location of senior Hamas officials if, if they if, didn't invade Rafah? No, That's a we, yes or no. If we, no, if we had the locations, of course we'd provide them, irrespective. So, so this statement, you're saying the Post got it totally wrong, it is utterly false, and, and anyone who said to the contrary was lying and perjuring themselves that, if they that, were under oath. That statement is incorrect. We have done and will continue to do everything we can to, if we can do it, develop the information and share the information. Uh, I wish we had it. Does the administration have intelligence on the locations of Hamas officials that you have not shared with Israel? Uh, no. Does the administration have the locations of Hamas terror tunnels that you have not shared with Israel? No. Okay, so then your, your position is that this story is an utter and complete lie. As, as, you've, as you've read it to me, Senator, it's not, it, it, it is not, it is not and, accurate. And, and, not and we're not interested facts. in playing word games. I've asked no. you very directly. I have so not. So you're saying there's not a single Hamas leader that you know about that you, that you or the administration has offered will tell you where they are if you don't engage, that invade Rafah. That is correct. Rafa. What have you offered them not to invade Rafah? We've offered them nothing, nothing not to invade Rafah except a plan to deal more effectively with Rafa. Okay, so to your deal testimony under Rafa. oath is you've offered them nothing not to invade Rafa. I find that very hard to believe, but I just want to understand what your testimony is. My t uh, I'll be very clear. We, ha we have told them, we've been engaged in a uh, long conversation with them 
about the most effective way to deal with the problem we agree must be dealt with. They that are quite Hamas aware you disagree with their plan to kill the Hamas terrorists because That's you and the president have vocally said it. And to be clear, wrong. your State Department on the morning of October 7th sent out a tweet telling Israel not to engage in military retaliation. I called you out at 3 in the morning and you deleted that tweet. The next day, you personally on October 8th sent a tweet saying you had spoken with the Turkish foreign minister and Israel should not retaliate. From the very beginning, the Biden administration has consistently at every stage told Israel, and by the way, when I called your tweet out, you deleted it again. At every stage, you have been telling Israel, do not kill the terrorists, and that has been from day one. Senator, I was in Israel five days after October 7th. I've been there seven times since. No one, starting with President Biden, has done more to make sure they have what they need to defend themselves from Hamas to deal with the threat well, that Hamas yeah, poses. With, with all due sure respect, that, that, no, that, 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 that's is, that simply is ludicrous. Wrong. That, that, that is ludicrous. Why, did, why have you cut off weapons to Israel then? We have not cut off weapons to Israel. In fact, we've, as you know well, uh, starting many years ago, uh, President Biden was at the heart of the MOU that led to Israel having a 10-year guaranteed supply of assistance, when it, uh, which when is you became very Secretary important of, When you became Secretary of State, how much oil was Iran selling a day? I'll have to come back to you on any numbers. I don't have the, uh, yeah, the numbers. You don't know. It doesn't surprise can... me you don't know. It was about 300,000. Hmm. How much oil is Iran selling today? We have, we have a, we've applied sanctions against more how than much 200 oil is entities Iran selling that are engaged today? in petrochemicals. How much oil? oil okay, you can tell me. I'm sure don't you, I'm filibuster. Sure you know. I'm not filibustering. How Go much ahead, oil me. are they selling today? Do you, you tell know? me. You tell me. Uh, apparently, you don't know. So you don't know how much they were selling. It was 300,000. Today, they're selling about 2 million barrels a day. Let me ask you. And the given the sanctions, given the export controls, given the other controls we put on, the cost of doing that, uh, the evasion that they have to engage in, which we're trying to cut They've off, made about $80 billion. Dollars. Let me ask you another question. I'm running out of time, so I'm, I'm not interested in speeches. Let me ask you this. How many ghost fleet ships did Iran have in November 2020? We uh, have sanctioned more than 200 it's a question. of those. I'm, I'm not, how many did We've, they have? Um, the total number, I can't tell you what it had in 2021. I'll come back to you with that. But we have, uh, The number was about 70. Yeah, how we, many did they have today? About, we blocked about 50 of them. Okay, let's see how effective you are. How many did they have today? As I said, we blocked about 50. How many did they have today? You, you, you tell me, I'm sure you They have about over 400. Mm -hmm. Look, this administration desperately wants a new Iran deal. You, you have been showering cash on Iran from day one. And understand, the $6 billion you were asked about is the tip of the iceberg. By refusing to enforce oil sanctions, we have seen Iran's oil sales go from 300,000 barrels a day when you got into office to over 2 million barrels a day today. That's $80 billion. 90% of Hamas's funding comes from Iran in a very real sense. This administration, you and President Biden, funded the October 7th attacks by flowing $100 billion to a homicidal, genocidal regime that funded those attacks. That statement is profoundly wrong. Why? I'm not even going to uh, humor it. I think it's a disgraceful statement. Uh, why? We have gone at Iran repeatedly with more than 600 sanctions applied against different persons. Then why are they entities? selling 2 million barrels a day as compared to 300,000? They are working hard to do what they can to get around the sanctions. So just it the prior administration cost, was, was, had cost, tools you didn't the have, they were more doing, effective, the or maybe they just weren't desperate to cut a deal with Iran. And we continue every single day uh, to go at them. You are it's refusing very, to address the facts. I'm not. Then why are they selling 2 million barrels a day? Because they're determined to try to do that. We're determined to cut them off. They weren't determined when Trump was president? They were, they were determined. And of course, unfortunately, uh, we also had their nuclear program in a box. No fissile material being produced. Okay, you're not answering the question. You're filibustering another topic. Not, Senator not Cruz, you get the last word. You get the last word, Julie. You funded our enemies and you undermine our friends and the world is much, much more dangerous as a result, and Americans are at greater jeopardy because of it. In fact, we brought more countries together. That, we have me, stronger me, uh, allies, stronger partnerships, stronger engagement from countries around the world to deal with a very dangerous world than we had. We were alone, we aren't anymore, and America is leading those efforts. Remember the Abraham Accords? I do. Let, let me uh, just 